call to worship today is from Psalm 100. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Oh, yeah. 
everyone. I'm Dondre. I'm the praise band leader here at Beaverton First, and we're really thrilled you could be with us today. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when we had that 118 degree heat this summer, I was kind of afraid that the leaves were going to be so damaged on the trees that we wouldn't get a beautiful fall. Uh, but I was mistaken. So that is a wonderful thing. I hope you're enjoying all the vibrant colors. They're just so intense right now. Um, it's a very beautiful fall and, you know, at least between raindrops, it gives you something to do. Um, as we move forward in our service, won't you join me in our vision statement? Here at the heart of Beaverton, Christ calls us to feed our community, body, mind, and spirit. And now let's join together in prayer. Lord, let us be still a moment as we enter into our time of worship, knowing that in our hectic lives, we can sometimes forget to see the wonders of your world. All around us are the reminders of the beauty you offer to us. Vibrant colors of red and gold shining with a background of, of green and gray, showing us your majesty. And as we gather today to celebrate your love and your creation, help us remember that we're stewards of this beauty, and that we should cherish it and make sure that everyone is able to receive its bounty. Let that be a part of our ministry, which proclaims your love and justice for all people. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Scripture reading today is from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1-18 through 18 in the New Living Translation. This is my second letter to you, dear friends, and in both of them I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forgot that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command, and he brought earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world, with a mighty flood, and by the same word, the present heavens and earth had been stored up for fire. 
They are being kept for the day of judgment, when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives should live? Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised. A world filled with God's righteous righteousness. And so, dear friends, when you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of the scripture, and this will result in their destruction. You already know these things, dear friends, so be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of the wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. To those who have received a faith as precious as ours through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, May grace and peace be yours in abundance in knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. These were the words Peter wrote in his introduction to all who shared his faith in Jesus. Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Jefferson Chow, and I am so glad you can join us for worship today. When we read the second letter of Peter, some of us may experience Peter's letter as a typical formal letter that lacks the customary final greeting. But when we dive deeper into Peter's letter, we begin to notice Peter presenting this letter in the first person. And the way we can understand Peter's letter in the first person experience is his characteristic of testament. The last words of advice and warning given by a patriarch to his children before his death. As a Christian, I believe Peter is the closest person in the Bible to which we can relate. Many faith leaders have preached about Peter, but I want all of us to relate to Peter as a Christian disciple today. And today, I would like to ask the church, what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We have heard many testimonies of being saved, but we never listen to what lengths and measure it takes to continue our faith. We are told to persevere through Christ. What does that look like? Peter is the prime example of a true Christian disciple that grappled with his faith. As many of you know, Peter was a fisherman. According to the Gospels, he followed Jesus the moment he was called, along with his brother Andrew. Out of all the disciples, Peter witnessed and experienced the most miracles and events with Jesus. But Peter also failed Jesus several times as well. 
When Peter was with Jesus, he walked on water, heard the voice of the Father, healed people, and heard and had the ears to listen to Jesus' teachings. But the moment Peter fell short with Jesus, he drowned, began to doubt, lost his temper, acted in violence, abandoned Jesus, broke his promise, denied him, and sat in guilt and regret. Does this sound familiar to you? I know it does for me. All of us who have accepted Jesus in our lives have been like Peter. We have all fallen short with Jesus and we have all tried our best to come back to Jesus even when we feel like we are not worthy of the task or Jesus' presence. For my connection with Peter as a Christian, I have realized that my faith in God takes time, which I have come to understand as God's time and our time. Do you remember the first time you accepted God in your life? Now, I'm not talking about fellowship, Bible study, outreach, or other events with people but your first relationship with God. What was that like? What did you experience? How did you feel? If we turn to Peter, the first day he followed Jesus, Peter must have felt comfortable, peaceful. Or else, why would he drop everything and follow Jesus? Now, none of the Gospels tell us how Peter felt. But from my experience, the day I accepted God in my life was during hardship. So what if Peter was tired of being a fisherman? What if Peter was tired of struggling for food day after day, hoping to catch some fish? What if Peter wanted more to life? than just fishing and boating. Some of us may have felt the same way as Peter, tired, frustrated, and wanting more to life than just the same routine. And doesn't it seem like when, when we're in that moment, time seems to either move fast or drag slow? We hope tomorrow will be better than the next, but for some reason, it gets worse. Now, there are days when things seem to be bright, and we long in memory of those days, hoping for another one to appear. When we do things without God, our time seems to be distant. Distant from God, distant towards ourselves, and distant to those around us. We seem to constantly be chasing something and running out of time. When Peter denied Jesus, he was always in the distance. Luke says, so they arrested him, Jesus, and led him to the high priest's home, and Peter followed at a distance. Now, here's the beautiful thing about Jesus. The more we are distant from him, the more Jesus appears to us. If we continue with the story of Peter denying Jesus, he denied Jesus when the lady in the courtyard saw his face, and two other times when someone saw Peter's face an hour apart from each other. Peter was pushing Jesus further away. And right when Peter hits the wall and he couldn't run any further, Luke reminds us that Peter, immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. 
and Peter left the courtyard, weeping bitterly. Peter left the courtyard, weeping bitterly. And many of us can connect with that experience. But Jesus doesn't hold a grudge. He does something incredible. Jesus stretches time. Have you ever said, I wish there was more time? Or if there were only eight days in a week, I can get things done? I know I have said these things, these statements numerous times. And many people have wondered how I can juggle my life as a pastor, innovator, city partner, community partner, master student, husband, and parent. I truly don't have an answer on how I can do all these things. But what I do know is I had to turn to Jesus. I had to place Jesus in the center of my life for things to continue. I had to let go of my pride and ego and follow Jesus. Like Peter, there were, there were times when I had doubt. But what I have experienced is Jesus somehow stretches that time for me when I turn to him. And Peter's letter that Ted read today shares that same experience Peter had when he wrote, But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. If we turn back to the story of Peter, after his denial, Peter doesn't appear until Mary tells the disciples that Jesus has risen from the tomb. And Peter was the first to run to the tomb to see what had happened. Peter was still dragging and counting the hours and days to see Jesus again. Stuck in his time, eagerly wanting to be with Jesus. Peter was seeking Jesus to be the center of his life so he could move forward. But yet again, Peter was still following Jesus from a distance. But the more we are distant from Jesus, the more Jesus appears to us. And according to the Gospels, Jesus appears to Peter and the disciples after he had risen from the tomb at the Sea of Galilee. And what were they doing? They went back to the beginning of their trade, fishing. Peter and the disciples went back to where, where they first met Jesus and did what they knew best, struggling to catch some fish and dreading the days again. But when Jesus shouted to the disciples to cast their net to the other side of the boat, Peter knew it was Jesus and he ran to him. Peter was reminded of his first encounter with Jesus, his first love for Jesus. And once Peter turned to Jesus again, Jesus stretched the day to be like a thousand years. And just like that, Jesus chose Peter to feed his sheep, to take care of his lamb, to tend to his sheep. Peter was no longer fighting for time. Jesus gave Peter time. And this is why Peter says, since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this. 
what holy and godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hurry to along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised. A world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. My brothers and sisters, COVID may have taken away most of our lives, but COVID cannot take away our relationship with God. COVID may have increased challenges in our lifestyle in numerous ways, but if we turn to Jesus in every moment of our lives, I know, Peter knows, and you know, Jesus will somehow make a way, but only if we follow him. When Jesus says, follow me, Jesus means to follow his teachings. Follow the way he prayed earnestly by putting God first in his life. And follow the way he loves and values others as ourselves. Many churches are going through challenging times. And some believe that human ways will save their church in time. As humans, Peter has shown us that we are fooling ourselves when we say such things. And we deny the one who can save our hardship in our life, church, and community. The one who went through death and resurrection is the only one who can save our life, church, and community. And it will only happen if we put Jesus in the center. Jesus is the only way. But we need to turn to the first time we experience Jesus in our lives. We need to return to the time when we turn to Jesus during our hardship and allow Jesus to turn something impossible and make it possible for us to continue. But that will only happen if we turn to Jesus and dwell in his time, not ours. Jesus will give you time as long as you follow him. As Peter wrote in his final words, You already know these things, dear friends, so be on your guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever.
Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And all God's people say, Amen. <laughs>